One of the main components of any computer is the CPU and there have been a lot of different CPU socket types throughout the years. In this video, we are going to look at the socket types from both Intel and AMD and we'll see how all of those have evolved through the years. Quite a number of years back, Intel introduced the Intel LGA775. The LGA775 has a lot of characteristics right in the name that we will need to know about. The LGA meaning Land Grid Array that is the array of all these little pins that are right here on the socket itself. And so the CPU chip itself does not have pins. All of the pins are on the socket and this is 775 pins so it's very easy to remember that based on the name. This was also called a socket T. It stood for Tejas Core that ultimately was cancelled by Intel but they kept the name. So you may hear this referred to as either an LGA775 or a socket T. This was around in about 2004. We saw this in some of the late model Pentium 4 and Intel Core 2 Duo, some Xeon and some Celeron processors. A successor to the LGA775 was the LGA1366. This had, as the name implies, 1366 pins on it. Very, very different socket than the 775. You can also see this referred to as the socket B. This came out in about 2008. And one of the very first Intel Core i7s used the LGA1366 socket as its motherboard interface. In 2009, Intel released another replacement for the Intel LGA775. This was the LGA1156. 1156 pins on this LGA package. This was also called the socket H1. What was nice about this particular technology is that it allowed Intel to create new CPUs that integrated the North Bridge right on the CPU itself. So you no longer needed that North Bridge memory controller right on the motherboard. Now it was integrated into the CPU for faster response times and faster efficiency when accessing memory. The LG1155 has 1155 pins. You may also hear this called a socket H2. And although it's very close to looking like an LGA1156, there's only one pin difference between those. There is not a compatibility between those chips. You can't use them on different motherboards. This LGA1155 was the next generation of processor sockets for Intel. It was released in 2011 and it supported the latest generation of Intel Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge processors. Here's a summary of these processor types. You can see starting with the 775 all the way up to the 1155. All of these are land grid array and you can see a summary of these release dates. Also here you can see the types of CPUs that were expected to be used in these particular sockets. Starting with the Pentiums, going through the Nihilum code name that Intel used for a series of chips all the way up to the Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge chips. And the last column here shows you the type of memory that's supported on each one of these socket types. Now let's change our focus to the evolution of how AMD has changed their sockets to the years. Let's start with the socket 940. These names are so easy to remember because this one has 940 pins. And unlike the Intel LGAs that we were looking at, you notice this is a different format. This is a pin grid array, a PGA, where all of the holes for the processor are on the motherboard. And the processor itself is a zero insertion force package, where it has all of the pins that fit into the holes that are on the motherboard. And it locks down with zero force by using this locking arm on the side. This came out in about 2003. It was used for the Opteron and the Athlon 64FX chips. So 64-bit servers was the primary focus for the Socket 940. The Socket 940 supported CPUs that can use DDR RAM. So we are going back to 2003 when we were using the double data rate RAM and not yet getting into the DDR2 or DDR3 memory. In 2006, AMD released a new socket called the Socket AM2. 
The socket also had 940 pins on it, but it was not compatible with the older socket 940 previous to this version. One significant change in the socket AM2 is that it allowed processors to use DDR2. And because you are not able to have that backward compatibility with the socket 940, we weren't able to use DDR memory, only DDR2 memory with the socket AM2. In 2006, about the same time that AM2 socket was released, AMD also released socket F. This was an LGA package, so a little bit different than the PGA package we were saying earlier. And the socket F has 1207 pins. The socket F was really designed for servers. The CPUs that would use the socket F needed to use registered DDR2 memory. That's a buffered memory that had very high throughput. And at the same time, these particular CPUs also had a faster throughput on the front side bus. So you could send and receive information to that memory that much faster. In 2007, AMD introduced an upgrade to the socket AM2 called the socket AM2 Plus. As the name implies, it was a minor upgrade. Physically, it looks identical to the socket AM2. The AM2 Plus processors can potentially operate on an AM2 motherboard. Usually would require a BIOS change to the AM2 motherboard. And AM2 processors were designed to work on AM2 Plus motherboard. This was a minor upgrade. There was faster communication on the front side bus. There was better power management. And it really positioned AMD to have faster processors for their computers. AMD's next generation of processors used a new socket called the socket AM3. This was a 940 pin socket again using that PGA ZIF package. And it effectively upgraded and replaced the AM2 and AM2 Plus sockets. What was interesting about this socket is that there was some backwards compatibility. You can take a processor designed for an AM3 and put it into an AM2 or AM2 Plus socket motherboard. Usually it required a BIOS upgrade. One major advantage of using the socket AM3 is that the processors used were able to use DDR3 memory. So you can have higher throughput and faster performance. As you can see, AMD tends to make minor changes to their sockets so that you can, in some cases, take the processor from your older motherboard and use that in your newer motherboard. And so they released in 2011 the socket AM3 Plus. This has 942 pins and again have that PGA package. And again, what's nice about this is the upgradability. You can take your AM3 processor, buy a new AM3 Plus motherboard and use that processor in the motherboard. AMD did not support taking the AM3 Plus and moving it to the older motherboards. But you can certainly take your older processor and move it up the faster technology on the motherboards that supported AM3 Plus. In 2011, AMD also introduced the 905 pin socket FM1. The FM1 allowed processors that had higher performance. They used DDR3 memory and it did things like take the PCI Express controller and move it onto the CPU itself. Here's a summary of the AMD sockets from the 940 up to the FM1. You can see almost all of them used a PGA except for the socket F. The release dates are also in here and the type of processors that were used on those sockets. And you can see the type of memories changed a lot over the years, going from a DDR dual channel all the way up to a DDR3 dual channel.